Welcome to our program on Managing for Results. Look at a day when you are supremely satisfied at the end. It is not a day when you lounge around doing nothing. It's when you've had everything to do and you've done it. Margaret Thatcher In every organization, small or big, there exist a number of hierarchical levels. Within each of these levels, there are groups of employees with varying skills, temperament, ability and enthusiasm. When each group is able to work cohesively, the organization as a whole functions smoothly. Now, this is where the manager comes into the picture. It is the manager's responsibility to ensure that every member of his team performs efficiently and effectively. He makes sure that the various members of his team complement each other and work in tandem to produce the desired results. In doing so, he must instill in his team a feeling of loyalty and commitment to the organization. Under the leadership of a good manager, each member of the team performs better than he would if left to himself. In this sense, management can be defined as the art of inspiring people to believe in their own abilities and thus enhance their own performance levels. In this program, we shall first understand the concept of managing for results, that is, producing results through effective management of people. Then, we shall go on to review the importance of effectiveness as compared with efficiency. Further, we shall identify some inherent qualities which go into making a manager effective and then understand how he also performs as leader of his people. Lastly, we shall see some ideas one can implement to maximize his team's productivity and enhance their levels of performance. Click on Effectiveness versus Efficiency to begin the program. Every manager hopes to achieve something when he does his job. Then, what exactly do we mean by managing for results? In this module, we shall try to understand how one can manage effectively to generate the right results. In the words of Peter Drucker, well-known management guru, efficiency is doing things right, effectiveness is doing the right things. Sri Sharyu Rangnekar, internationally acknowledged as Indian guru of management studies, puts it this way, Many managers who perform efficiently and consistently do things right never stop to ask if these are the right things to do. Think about it. Which person would you put in charge of your affairs? One who follows your orders to the letter without question, delivers on time and never raises any issues about whether you are correct? Or would you go with the person who prefers to study your requirement and figure out how to best get the results you want? even though the best way may sometimes not coincide with your plans. Let us study the following situation. Michael's house has a garage attached to it. The walls of his garage develop damp patches after even a light drizzle. He calls in David to look over his garage and rectify the problem. Michael David, I think the problem is with the roof. I guess the rainwater collects there and seeps into the walls. If the roof is relayed, the problem should be solved. While you are at it, I would like the door repaired and painted. David Well, sir, you say you need the roof to be relayed and the door repaired and painted. As I can see it, it should take me about four days of work. I'll need another of my men to help here and we'll use about four cans of paint. All in all, I can do it for you for thirty dollars. Michael? Okay, I'll think about it and let you know. The next day, Gregory, a friend of Michael's college days, drops by. Michael mentions something about his garage and Gregory wants to take a look. Gregory? Michael, what made you think your roof is the problem? If that was so, you would have damp patches all along the top of the wall where it meets the roof. That isn't the case. Come on, I think I know what the problem is. Gregory takes Michael outside and shows him several cracks on the outer side of the garage wall. Gregory, look here. This is where the problem is. The rainwater gets into the walls through these cracks. Even with a new roof, you would still have the damp patches come every shower. 
relaying the roof will not give you the results you want. From what we have just seen, it is clear that while David might have done what was asked of him in an extremely efficient way, his work would not have prevented the garage walls from becoming damp, which is the end result that Michael desired. It is thus evident that while David is capable of efficient work, he may not be effective. Similarly, in any organization, it is the results that are obtained which justify the efforts of the manager. If a sales team sells five more television sets per week after a new manager takes charge, it is evident that in some way the new manager has been able to inspire his people to get results. Whereas, if after the manager takes charge, his team continues to sell the same number of sets as earlier, then what is the contribution of the manager? Thus, effectiveness is the test of every manager. Does he or she get the results that are desired? Is she able to get her team to put in their best efforts? These are the questions that every manager needs to ask himself or herself. Let's review what we have learned about managing for results so far. In this module, we saw how a problem, even when efficiently tackled, may not produce desired results. This is where the difference between efficiency and effectiveness becomes very apparent. While efficiency is important, it is far more crucial to complete a task effectively to ensure that the desired results are produced. It is here that the effective manager shows his mettle. Click on the effective manager. We saw in the previous section that the test of the manager lies in the results he is able to produce. Now, let us go on to analyze what goes into making an effective manager. Megabytes Corp is a multi-crore software company with a huge turnover. Arvind and Malik are both project managers with similar backgrounds, both handling critical projects for important clients. Currently, both teams are working hard to complete big projects. Ravi is a member of Arvind's team, while Thomas belongs to Malik's group. Both Ravi and Thomas are appearing for an exam at the software training course they attend after office hours. If they clear this exam, it could mean a promotion or higher pay for them. But they need to take a day off in order to appear for the exam, and this is a problem when their team is racing against time to meet the deadline. Ravi, Arvind, you know the software course I attend. My exams are on next week. I need to take a day off to take the test. Arvind, Yes, Ravi, I remember you telling me about your course. I hope you are well prepared to take the test and clear it with good grades. That will be great for our team. As for your exams, I can understand your problem. But Ravi, you know we are running behind schedule on this project and your inputs on this project are invaluable. Can you ask your instructor if he can arrange for you to take the test on a Sunday as a special case? I know this is difficult, but I would really appreciate if you could be in on this project until the end. Ravi, Arvind, I already did. Unfortunately, my instructor is leaving for the States the next day after the scheduled exams, so he turned down my request. I will make sure the work here does not get held up because of my absence. Arvind, I really appreciate your trying to postpone your exams. However, if it isn't possible, please go ahead and do well. By the way, I did a similar course last year. I will send across the material I have so that you can have a look at that before your exams. If you need any help, do ask. I will try to take on some of your workload here so that you can take some time off for study without delaying our project. Meanwhile, Thomas has a similar request for his project manager, Malik. Thomas, Malik, like I told you last week, I will need to take a day off for my exams the coming week. Malik, what? Leave? How can you say that? Don't you know that your team members are desperately trying to finish the project within deadline? How can you even think of leave? What exams are you writing anyway? We now saw how the same situation was handled very differently by the two managers. Who do you think will command more loyalty from his team? Which manager will be able to motivate his team to put in more and more efforts? Which is the more effective manager?
The answer is obviously Arvind. There are several reasons why. Firstly, he is willing to hear what Ravi has to say. Then he shows what he cares about his team members by his interest in Ravi's course. Then he calmly states his objections in a positive way by highlighting the importance of Ravi's contribution to the project. Next, he accepts the fact that the exams cannot be postponed while showing appreciation for Ravi's attempt to do so. Finally, he shows enthusiasm by offering his course materials and imparts a sense of belonging and teamwork by offering to take on some of Ravi's work in order to give him study time. Also note how Arvind always speaks of our team while Malik prefers to use your team members. The entire conversation gives Ravi the feeling that his personal contribution is significant for the success of his team. But he is also sure that his personal success is appreciated. The feeling of loyalty and commitment which Arvind has reinforced in the above conversation will go a long way in enhancing Ravi's performance. It is now clear that the effective manager has certain traits which allow him to get the best results out of his people. Let us now see what these traits are. The word manager automatically bestows some authority or power. Any authority comes with its own responsibilities. Without one, the other is rendered pointless. Only when the manager shows that he is willing to shoulder his responsibilities with enthusiasm and optimism, can he convince his team members to follow his example. Every member of his team is sure to respond in kind and give their best. In our scenario, Arvind is happy to take on the additional responsibilities of sharing Ravi's workload in order to make sure that the project goes on smoothly while Ravi gives his exams. Arvind can be sure that each of his team members will be only too happy to follow his example. A high degree of commitment among team members is a prerequisite for maximum productivity. Every manager, by demonstration and by his very attitude towards work, ensures that each and every person in his charge develops a sense of commitment and loyalty towards his team members, his work and the organization he works for. This can be best done when the manager sets an example by putting the interests of his team and the assignment before his own. In our example above, Arvind gives due importance to Ravi's exams, but by taking on Ravi's load to ensure that the deadlines are met, he has demonstrated his commitment towards his work. In every organization, one encounters various kinds of managers. Some are happy to rush headlong into any new idea, irrespective of the kind of work involved, the capabilities of his team, the time available, etc. Others are afraid of overstepping the boundaries set by the previous manager and prefer to toe his lines, even if it means sticking to outdated ideas and impracticable methods leading to frustration within the team. The effective manager makes sure that he does not close his mind to fresh ideas. He is willing to listen to and analyze new concepts and techniques to help his team perform more productively. He is innovative and enthusiastic about new approaches which seem viable and realistic. The effective manager does not run his team with an iron hand. He prefers to lead them towards desired goals by allowing them some freedom and flexibility in their work approach. He is aware that different people function differently. While one may prefer to mechanically follow strict guidelines, another may resent such rigidity and may perform far better if given some leeway to try out his ideas. In order to get results, the manager must understand the unique personalities of each of his team members and deal with each in the best possible way. This definitely does not mean that all team members must be given the green signal to do whatever they please. However, as long as each is working towards the preset goal and producing results, some flexibility in work approach ensures a tranquil work environment. Finally, the effective manager must make sure that he does not portray himself as a super being who is all-powerful and all-knowing. A leader who stays aloof from his people will never enjoy complete loyalty. The effective manager must gain his team's confidence by presenting a human face in interacting with them and handling 
the everyday workplace issues. In this module, we have seen how the effective manager puts to use certain inherent qualities to ensure that his team is productive. Let us list out what these qualities are. Responsible, committed, innovative, approachable, flexible. In the next module, we shall see how the effective manager is a leader as well. Click on module 3. The manager as a leader. In our discussion in the previous module, one character trait has emerged as being critical to the effective manager. In order to get results, the manager also has to be a convincing leader who inspires loyalty, imparts confidence and inculcates commitment. He not only identifies the goals for the team but also takes them there. Let us now see how the effective manager is a successful leader as well. Results are us Limited offers to solve small day-to-day -day problems for callers. They get a wide variety of requests, household repairs, urgent requirements for babysitters and such like. Samuel, a manager, leads the team which deals with arranging for immediate help with household emergencies. On an average, they get about 50 calls every half an hour. The four members of his team need to be on their toes every working second. Samuel's school friend, William, has dropped into the office on a surprise visit and finds Samuel, along with the rest of the team, finishing a call from a customer. William, hey, I looked into your office, but they told me you were here with the rest of the team. What's up? Aren't you a manager anymore? Why are you handling calls? Samuel, I often handle some of the team's work when all my people are overworked. I look at it this way. Lending a hand when the work gets hectic gives me a feel of what these guys actually go through. It also shows them that I'm here if they need me. After all, we are all part of the same team and they want results as much as I do. William, well, you certainly haven't changed much since our school days. Then, you were always the first to try out anything new. Are you still like that? Samuel, well, William, yes. I am still the same. And you know what? My team comes up with such great ideas because they know that I am always happy to experiment. In fact, it is good to keep those creative juices flowing because we can always count on some outrageous new proposition from our team maverick Steve for a good laugh. Seriously though, we have implemented several new ideas given by the team with great results. One was to divide the calls among the guys according to the area of origination. Now, every call from one specific area is handled by the same person. So, each of the guys have developed some familiarity with our frequent callers. It works wonders for the business when our guys are able to recognize a customer just by his voice or inquire after his arthritis or ask if his plumbing has been okay since last time. Our customers love the personal touch it imparts to our service. William well, maybe, but... Samuel, maybe? I hate that word. I never use that word when I'm talking to my team. It makes me appear so unsure of myself. I mean, how will my team believe in me if I can't convince them that I believe in myself? William, well, you always knew what to do and how to do it. Is it because you were such a bookworm when young? What really is your secret? Samuel laughs. It is not only me and what I know, William. It's my team. These guys have been in this line of work for a long time now. They know a lot about their work. And I don't mind learning from them at times. I just make sure that I give them a clear idea of where I want us to go. And then we all make sure we get there. That's my secret of success. We have now seen how Samuel believes in using his inherent qualities to guide his team towards better performance. Let us now put down a list to understand the qualities and beliefs which make him not only a competent manager but also a popular leader. The effective leader manager is not one who is content with delegation of the work to his team. He prefers to involve himself in every aspect of the work and thus ensures at every stage that the team is heading the right way. In our scenario, 
Samuel does not hesitate to jump into the fray when the team needs a hand. He is self-assured and appears confident of himself in all situations. This air of confidence imparts a sense of security to his people and the conviction that, with his support, even the most intimidating problems can be tackled with success. He keeps an open mind and is willing to experiment with new ideas and innovative approaches if they are in the best interests of the team. This encourages creativity within the team and inspires the team to come up with new ideas to deal with the task at hand rather than mechanically follow preset methodologies. He ensures that he is well informed in his area of expertise and uses this knowledge, not his designation alone, to support his authority. He is not afraid to share his knowledge with his team and does not think that asking for more information undermines his authority. Also, sound knowledge of the assignment gives him a realistic idea of the difficulties and problems which the work may entail, thereby allowing him to proactively meet the challenges which may arise during the course of the work. He is a visionary with a keen sense of realism, capable of balancing given facts and capabilities to identify viable goals and realistic objectives. It is also imperative that he has clarity in his vision so that he can convey the same to his team without creating ambiguity in the very target the team is asked to strive for. Summary In this module, we have seen how the effective manager, by incorporating certain character traits into his mental makeup, transforms himself into a natural leader. Let us quickly look over these traits again. The effective manager leader is involved, self assured, open minded, well informed, a visionary. We shall now go on to understand how people can be managed effectively. Click on Module 4 How to Manage Effectively. In the previous section, we saw how the effective manager must also be a natural leader. He must necessarily possess certain strengths which help him take the team towards the desired goal. Now it is not enough for the leader to exhibit an aura of competence. He must also know how best to deal with his people in order to get them to produce results. While one team member may prefer working within a rigid framework of guidelines where there is no scope for errors, another may feel stifled in such an environment. He may work better when afforded some flexibility in his work methods. Now the effective manager must deal with each in such a way that both are comfortable with the work assigned to them and enthusiastic about their contribution to the team effort. In any group, there are no two persons who are exactly similar in temperament, attitude and ideas. In such a case, how do you as a manager deal with the various team members to produce results? Let us now see a few ideas on managing the team. Avoid playing God. Lead your people by letting them know that you are with them and not above them. This ensures that the team responds to you not only because of your authority over them but because they feel that as a part of the team you know what is best for them. Influence people to do what is required rather than use your position to demand that they do your bidding. Thus the team members are enthusiastic about the work and harbor no resentment about being given orders. Get to know your people and make a sincere effort to understand your people so that you can interact in the way best suited to the personality of each. In doing this, the boss-subordinate relationship is converted into one which is more friendly, open and makes for better exchange of ideas. Show by demonstration that you are willing to view difficult assignments as challenges rather than as problems. This imparts a sense of fulfillment to the team when each difficulty is successfully dealt with. Share your ideas and vision with your team members. After all, it is they who will actually implement these ideas and fulfill your vision. It is therefore essential that you convince the team of the efficacy and feasibility of your methods. 
motivate people to strive for higher and better goals and reinforce their confidence in their own abilities. Create a synergistic environment within the team and strive to make the team a cohesive work unit. In doing so, group conflicts and internal tensions are diffused to make way for a goal-oriented team effort all the time. Exhibit enthusiasm about training your people and developing their innate skills, thus conveying that the growth and betterment of each member matters to you. This inspires your team to continuously enrich themselves in their respective areas of competence and use their newly gained knowledge to enhance the team's performance as a whole. Communicate the goals and objectives clearly and coherently and make sure that each member of the team participates in setting down the work schedule and methodology. Encourage interchange of ideas as this will clear the air of any doubts and prevent confusion. Convey the feeling that achieving the goal is more important than the manner in which it is done. In other words, make it clear that they need not fear interference from you at every point as long as the desired result is achieved. Allowing some flexibility in work approach makes for a more relaxed and productive environment. Stay on top of what is happening. Make sure that you get status reports periodically and get together to discuss the progress at fixed intervals. This allows you to identify potential problem areas. This also helps the team stop a while and look back on how much further they have come than before. Understand the capabilities and strengths of each person and delegate responsibilities accordingly. In doing this, you ensure that each person gets the job he does best and every job is done by the person best suited to doing it. Give constructive and objective feedback. Make sure that every point you make goes towards helping the person understand and improve his performance rather than discourage him from trying anymore. Show that the effort of each team member is valuable and necessary to the success of the team. Summary Every manager must aim at maximizing the productivity of his team while maintaining the best possible relationship with the people who work for him. This module describes how one can manage his or her team so as to motivate them to produce desired results. Let us now briefly go over the main points discussed here. Lead the team. Do not control from afar. Influence rather than command. Understand your people. Exhibit a positive attitude when dealing with problems. Share your vision with the team and convince them to follow you. Motivate your people to reach for higher and higher goals. Create and promote synergy within the team. Show enthusiasm about training your people. Communicate the goals clearly and coherently. Focus on the results obtained and allow some flexibility to follow different work approaches. Stay aware of what is happening with the team members and the project as a whole. Delegate realistically and with an eye on who is best suited to do what job. Provide frequent constructive and objective feedback. At the very beginning of this program on managing for results, we saw how the manager brings together persons with varying skills, abilities, attitudes and ambitions to form a cohesive, seamless team which works in synergy to produce the best possible results. But the manager's job does not end with getting his team to deliver. He must achieve this by means of building up the team's confidence and enthusiasm towards work. He must be able to transmit his passion for success to his team and kindle their spirit to reach for higher and higher goals. The team of such a manager looks up to him as a leader, a brother in arms, a sympathetic friend and as a mentor. Thus, the effective manager must incorporate into his personality and mindset the essence of all these roles. We hope that this program has helped you in the following areas. 1. Understanding the term managing for results. 2. Appreciating the need for effectiveness over efficiency. 3. Identifying the basic qualities of the effective manager. 4. Recognizing the need for a manager to be a leader of his people.
5. Gaining insight on some effective management techniques. Thank you for participating in this program on Managing for Results. We hope you have found it informative and interesting. Goodbye.